Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the addition and the subtraction postulates. So let's get started with the do now. Suppose you know that segment AC is congruent to segment DB and point E is the midpoint of segment CD. Explain how we know that segment AE is congruent to segment EB. So let's first denote what we know in the diagram. As we learned in the previous lessons, you can just place a tick mark for the congruent segments. For example, we know that segment AC is congruent to segment DB here, right? But we also know that E is the midpoint of segment CD. So what does that tell us? Well, we know that now segment CE has to be congruent to segment ED. So how do we know that this entire segment here is congruent to this segment? How can we justify this? Well, we know it must be true intuitively and logically, but let's formalize this in a statement reason table. First, let's write the given that segment AC is congruent to segment DB. The next thing we want to write here is for number two, that E is the midpoint of segment CD, which is also a given. So normally when you do a statement reason table, as a side note, uh, you want to use the givens only when needed. So for example, for the first given, when we stated that segment AC is congruent to segment DB, we did state it, but there was nothing we can conclude from that. However, if you look at the second given that E is the midpoint, or point E is the midpoint of segment CD, well, there's something we can conclude from that, right? Here, we can conclude now that segment CE must be congruent to segment ED, right? Just because E is the midpoint of segment CD. And you can see it in the diagram as well. Now, in a statement reason table, for the reason for that, you can just write definition of midpoint, and that's fine. And as you remember, we actually did develop the definition back in lesson 2.2 when we discussed postulates and theorems. We defined the midpoint of a segment to be a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments, okay? So we have to be very careful how do we use the definitions. Okay, so now if you look at this, right? If you look at segment AC and CE, right, and segment DB and ED, they're congruent respectively. So how do we know that segment AE is congruent to segment EB? So basically, what is the reason for the fact that segment AE is congruent to segment EB? Well, if you take this segment here, right, AC, and let me use a different color here and add it to this segment, you're actually doing the same thing as if you add this segment to this segment, right? So what this means is that this distance here, so let me highlight it, this distance is going to be the same as this distance or the shape is going to be the same, right? Because we're dealing with congruent segments here. So what we're doing here, we're actually adding this up, okay? And that's why I'm introducing now the addition postulate. Okay, so let's first define the addition postulate. Uh, so the addition postulate has a definition can, that can be applied to various applications. For example, the first one states that if equal quantities are added to equal quantities, the sums are equal. If congruent segments are added to congruent segments, the sums are equal. And if congruent angles are added to congruent angles, the sums are congruent. So why are there three different applications here? Well, let me demonstrate this really quick. So let's look at quantities. Let's say you have two segments, right? But now you're focusing on the quantities, the measures, right? For example, the measure of segment AC is equal to the measure of segment DB. Then you have the measure of segment CE is equal to the measure of segment ED. But what happens when you add them up? Well, here you end up with the measure of segment AE, okay? So usually you don't count these twice because that's the point in the middle. So you look at E and A and E, and that is equal to, again, you don't look at this one, you look at B, 
E. Okay, so that's what happens. That's how you can use it for quantities. So that's how you use it for segments or equal or congruent segments. You're adding them to congruent segments. Therefore, the sums are congruent, which is segment AE congruent to segment EB. And for angles, you can do the same thing, okay? However, for angles, keep in mind that you can only use measure. But we'll get to the angles in the future lessons. So let's look at another example that's going to lead us into the subtraction postulate. So let's say that here we know that the measure of segment AE, so this entire segment, okay, is equal to the measure of segment EB, okay, so this one. Uh, then we also know that this measure here, the measure of segment CE, is equal to the measure of segment EV. So what can we say about this segment and this segment in terms of measures? Well, how do we use the subtraction postulate here? Well, again, if we, for example, let's write it this way. Let's say we write AE okay, is equal to EB, obviously here I'm referring to the measure of the segments. And now we have the measure of segment CE is equal to the measure of segment ED. So how do we know from this or how do we conclude that segment AC is equal to segment BD or DB? It doesn't matter how you write it. Well, if you think about what we're doing here, we're actually subtracting. Okay. So for example, if you take segment AE, right, and subtract segment CE from it, you end up with segment AC. And similarly, if you subtract segment ED from segment EB, you end up with segment DB, okay? And that's basically the subtraction postulate. Okay, so let's define the subtraction postulate. So as the addition postulate, the subtraction postulate can be applied in three different scenarios. Number one for quantities, okay? If equal quantities are subtracted from equal quantities, the differences are equal. Then for congruent segments, which means that if congruent segments are subtracted from congruent segments, the differences are congruent. And also if congruent angles are subtracted from congruent angles, the differences are congruent. So let's look at another example. Let's say you have segment BD is congruent to segment CE, okay? How would you prove that segment BC is congruent to segment DE? So this seems a little different because now we have segments that are overlapping, okay? So what I'm trying to say here is that if you look at this, right, we know that segment BD is, this entire segment here is congruent to segment CE over here, okay? So how do we prove these two are congruent? Hmm. So let's develop a statement reason table and see how we can solve this. So the first thing we want to do here is write the given that segment BD is congruent to segment CE. So now we have to think about this and say, okay, what are the equal quantities that we can subtract from equal quantities from in this diagram? So basically what I'm trying to say, if let's say you write segment BD is congruent to segment CE, okay? You have to subtract something such that you end up with segment BC is congruent to segment DE, okay? Notice that here we're trying to prove that their measures are equal. So there's some other step that we have to include in the statement reason table, but we'll get to that. But let's think about this. What do we want to subtract from segment BD? So if you look at this, right, if you look at the relationship between this entire segment BD, how do we end up here with just segment BC? What do we have to subtract here? As you can see, we have to subtract this entire segment CD, okay? Similarly, if you look on the other side, if you have segment CE, and you want to have segment DE at the end, which is this one, right? The big one is this one, just so you guys can see it better. What do we need to subtract here? 
again, we need to subtract this part over here, which is also segment CV, okay? So now we're gonna write congruent too. So in this case, what we just did is worked with the precise definition of the subtraction postulate in which we're subtracting congruent segments, these ones, from congruent segments, such that the difference is congruent, okay? So let's write this in first. So the next step here for number two is to state that segment CD is congruent to itself. So what would be the reason for that? Well, as you remember in lesson 2.3, when we discussed equivalence relation, um, one of them stated that there's a postulate that when an object is uh, related to itself, and that was called the reflexive property, okay? So we want to write that in. Okay, now that we have that, now we can state that segment BC is congruent to segment DE. And again, the reason is the subtraction postulate. And finally, we can say that BC is equal to DE. And the reason is the definition of congruent segments. Notice that you can use a definition either if you go from congruent to measures or from measures to congruent segments because the definition is actually biconditional. So here's a summary of today's lesson. Today, we learn about the addition postulate and the subtraction postulate, in which both of these postulates can be applied to quantities, to segments when you're dealing with congruent segments, and it applies also to angles. Notice that the addition and the subtraction postulates are completely different than the segment addition and the segment subtraction postulates. This is something that we can discuss in the next coming lessons in my next YouTube videos.